gentlemen, we are joined live with former Congressman Dr. Ron Paul, really the uh, grandfather of the modern liberty movement uh, here in the United States and worldwide, worldwide uh, across the planet, from Asia to Europe, from Africa to Latin America to here in North America. People look to Ron Paul as the answer to the collectivist Borg. And uh, they are letting us announce something big today about the new uh, TV channel they're going to be launching. I'm told that this was supposed to launch tomorrow, but they're actually going to be announcing it today. We've got him for about 15, 20 minutes, but uh, the congressman joins us to get into foreign policy, the meltdown of the Middle East, the funding of Al-Qaeda openly. Uh, I'm going to get into the Federal Reserve and what's happening with the bonds uh, right now, uh, billions being lost uh, a day. And we're also going to look at the, the things that Ron Paul, myself, and others have talked about for decades and that we were ridiculed for, why it's all mainstream news now. So do we get any credit? No, we get attacked uh, even more. Uh, Dr. Paul, thanks for coming on with us. Good, good to be with you again. Wow, so much is happening. First and foremost, uh, you told him so again on foreign policy. What's happening there? Well, same old things, only worse. You know, the <laughs> whole idea that we continue to finance our enemies and our friends, and then our friends become our enemy, and nobody knows whose side they're on. That's why the argument for a non-interventionist foreign policy is so good, because there's always this flip-flopping. We support dictators for years and years and spend billions of dollars. And then, of course, uh, when we get tired of them or they turn on us, then we look for a new dictator. You know, this uh, craziness in, in Egypt, we demand that they have an election. They elect somebody we don't like, so then we have to send the weapons to the military, and then they have a military coup. So it goes on and on. And uh, right now, of course, the, one of the big issues is whether or not we'll get to the bottom of the truth on uh, Benghazi. But it shouldn't take too much uh, of uh, intelligence to figure out that our CIA is just about every place in the world, and they were very much involved. But if we have the direct evidence that they were in Benghazi, and one of the reasons our ambassador was there, because he was sending weapons directly to a group of people that we wanted to throw over Assad in Syria. But, when, but the foolishness is that we send it to al-Qaeda. You, know, you know, at one time, they're our arch enemy. They're wanting to kill us, but then we turn around, and we've done that in uh, Afghanistan. We've uh, sent money to the Taliban and sort of uh, bribed them to give us protection, and then we get our weapons through, and then they go and fight and kill each other. So I think it's ongoing. Uh, it, it's very foolish, and it's really a big uh, issue in the way our country has become bankrupt, too. Well, it's almost like a snake eating its tail because uh, Janet Napolitano, outgoing head of Homeland Security, says four years ago, oh, the new threats, uh, gun owners, libertarians, conservatives, anti-war people, basically anybody with a political view outside of Washington orthodoxy, and that's the new threat. And then they say al-Qaeda is not the threat. They're helping us in Libya and Syria. Then they say, oh, we've got to shut down all the embassies. And even the New York Times today uh, admits that... Uh, basically, they put out these terror alerts to distract from the NSA news. That is simply amazing. How long can this disjointed, helter-skelter narrative uh, continue to work, or is it not working now? Well, it's not amazing that this is the truth. It's amazing. I think the New York Times would admit it. But, you know, I think most of us, when they when we saw that and all the, the NSA was on the defense that they were closed in this embassy, they say, oh, there was... There were 50 attacks planned. We just saved us, you know, saved the country from it to prove that they're, they're uh, souping and all the spying on Americans does some good. But, you know, they, they claim successes. They're all built on lies. And, and you heard the story where uh, the testimony was that, yes, there were 54, uh, 54 saves that they prevented from happening. And then when they talked to the uh, assistant uh, uh, NSA official, he says, oh, no, maybe one, but I even doubt that. So it's, it's, all, it's all based on lies. And I think this is probably a benefit to us that most Americans now are becoming very, very leery of what our government tells us. And uh, it's a terrible thing to have to go through because uh, who, who wants to give up on their country? We don't want to give up on our country, but I think it's high time we gave up on a lot of our politicians and the way our government's being run.
Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.